one of the most useful skills for an amateur to have is the ability to solder. In this video we'll be soldering a PL259 plug to a length of coaxial cable ready to attach to an antenna. In the last video with Lee Mike 7 Mike Uniform Tango, we made a simple ballon by taking some coax cable and wrapping that around a ferrite core. We did that without a connector on the end of the coax. Uh, that's because it can be quite tricky to physically fit a connector through the center of the core, especially once you've got a few turns of cable on there. Now we're going to put the connector on. We're going to use a PL259 plug and that along with the associate, uh, associated SO239 socket are pretty much the most common kind of RF connector that you'll find, certainly on the HF bands. It tends to vary a little more once you get up to VHF and UHF. So, Lee, let's get on with that one now. Different types of plugs do work in different ways and you should always check with the person that you bought it from as to how you should assemble that plug. When you have one of these SO239 plugs, you want to remove the sleeve. And the way you do that is by pulling it back gently so that it engages with the thread and then unscrewing. And you should feel that start to pull back away from that center pin. Generally holding the center pin just gives you something to stop the, uh, the rest of the body rotating. So hold the center pin steady, and then you want to unscrew the body anti-clockwise. So you now get that sleeve and put that onto the free end of the coax. This way around before we check. Yes, that's that's yeah. perfect. This yep. check. Yeah, <laughs> we've all done that before. Yeah. The easiest way to strip the outer jacket off this coax is to get a craft knife and about 30 millimeters back from the end, just apply some gentle pressure, keeping your fingers out of the way and roll the coax back and forth. You don't want to go through the outer braid or into the inner. You just want to take that plastic outer jacket off. Once you've gone through there, you can see as I'm bending it slightly, you can see the silver braid is exposed. It might be copper colored as well if you have a different type of coax. Just going to gently bend that and then get my fingers under it and pull that outer jacket off. Now, what we want to end up with is this outer braid folding back over the outer jacket before. Now, you might find if you just gently push it in from the end, it starts to splay out a bit. Having a small screwdriver or a pair of tweezers can help this. You want to just separate all these strands. So you want to pull it apart. And then end up with it folded back. across the outer jacket, pulled down as far as you can. Yeah, so you can just tease these apart and you can either try and keep some of the, the original plat or you can just, it can be helpful to use either a, a small screwdriver or a pair of tweezers to just pull them apart into the individual strands. It doesn't matter if a few break off in the process. Next, we want to strip back this plastic covering over the inner. We don't need to go all the way back, otherwise it might short onto that braid. But I would leave five to 10 millimeters and then gently strip that. So I've now got the inner, a little bit of that dielectric, and then the braid over the outer give that a little bit of a twist so it doesn't spread apart. Now the first thing I suggest we do is that we tin that inner conductor. Now if you've got something that can hold that coax in place while you do, that might make life easier. Now get your soldering iron up to temperature, make sure you're working in a nice well ventilated area and get some appropriate eye protection on. Now you don't need a lot of solder here, but the idea is we're just going to gently cover 
just that inner so that it can't unravel. I'm going to apply the soldering iron and then just feed in a little bit of solder. And as I feed in solder, I'm going to work my way along the length of that inner conductor. So I'm not leaving any massive blobs. I'm just gently coating it in solder to turn that into one single conductor. Now we're going to take the connector body and you can see in the end of this, it has a little screw thread. That should carefully insert on there and you're going to see as you do it, this center conductor is going to poke out through that end of that center pin. If you feel resistance before you get to the outer jacket, that probably means that center conductor's got trapped somewhere inside. So there's a little bit of a knack to this. You can look down the center pin as you go, and you can see that that center conductor's starting to stick out there. I'm just going to gently screw it on so that the braid makes good contact. It's okay for this to stick out. Cool, so that should feel fairly solid on the coax at this point. And you should have a little bit of the center conductor sticking out visible at the end. It doesn't matter if you can only just see it. Okay, can you see the, uh, the center conductor on yours? Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. brilliant. So then what we need to do, because that braid should be a good electrical connection, but this won't be at the moment is we're going to get the soldering iron and solder that center conductor onto the center pin. Now, as you do this, you're trying to get the solder into the middle and not on the outside. Because if you get it onto the outside of the pin, it'll be quite difficult to insert it into the socket. So I'm going to push the soldering iron tip right into that middle. It'll probably take quite a while for it to heat up. And then, feed the solder again onto the conductor, trying to get it on the inside of that pin as much as I can. I'm going to feed a reasonable amount of solder in. Now, once it's cooled down and yours won't be quite yet, you should be able to just check that that center conductor is stuck to the edge of the connector. And if you do have some sticking out the end, you can just trim it off with a pair of side cutters. The last bit to do is to get that sleeve that you hopefully remembered to put on earlier. And mind if the tip of the connector is still hot. And screw that back onto the body. And there you go, that's a PL259 made. Now you may find that it just you just want to tidy it up if you've got some strands of braid sticking out the back. If you have a little bit of electrical tape, and I think I put some in the box. Uh, there should be, I think, yellow reel. Yep, a little bit of electrical tape, just one, one or two turns around the outside where it joins the coax jacket. That's great. So we've now got our feeder for our antenna, which has a ballon on it and also a PL259 plug. In the next video, we're going to connect that up to a simple HF dipole that we've just put together using a couple of bits of wire and a dipole center. And then we're going to use a nano VNA, uh, that's a vector network analyzer, to cut that dipole down to exactly the right length for the band that we want to operate on.